it Justine good afternoon all right so this morning I was uh, challenging you to write down things to write down when you uh, write down successes write down accomplishments write down those things that invested poured hope into you so that you could have hope so that as you move forward you can begin to see you can begin to see your life and having these deposits of hope that build up and um, and so what happens a lot of times when I when I share something um, I'll get feedback and so I don't like to put people on the spot so I won't use people's names but I got feedback on some of the stuff that I was saying this morning and uh, let me let me pull it up so I can tell you what it said um, so you know you're talking about vision talking about moving forward and you know looking at wanting to change jobs wanting to you know move into a different job because I'm worth more like I'm worth more than what this job pays me right and so and so the the the, the words say, you know, I also want, I want to become a, um, I want to apply to a preschool, but I can never get by on a small, on that small of a salary. It's really not possible. So here's a conflict. Here's a conflict that we have. Um, you know, I, I want a new job. I want to move into a new space because I'm worth more than what I'm getting here. I want to move into this particular area. I'm drawn to this. This is my choice. This is where I want to go. And so what happens is, you know, and then we think, on the on the number side of things uh, but there's not enough for me there well here's what I got to tell you wherever there's a vision this is what I wrote provision pro meaning the prefix pro means for and so when there's provision that means that there are things available resources available for the vision and and so when you start to have a dream and you start to think uh, I remember getting early when I when I first got into the horse business when I first started in the horse business uh, people told me, well, there's no money in horses. Like, there's no money in horses. There's no money in that business. Now, this is interesting to me because I know for a fact that there are people on television that run programs and seminars and do all kinds of things and make money with horses. Really, what a person's telling you or what you may be telling yourself when you say, there's no money in this, you have to tell yourself, there's no money in the way that I think. I remember when, when, when I was coming out of high school, the one thing I wanted to do, I wanted to be an elementary school teacher, teach second or third grade, and because I, I felt like I would make an impact on young people's lives that didn't get necessarily see a man um, in their life day to day, but I would be this super cool teacher that would impact children and um, take these off. impact children, and that's what I wanted to do. And I remember going to my dad. Hey, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Thanks for joining. Uh, I remember going to my dad and talking to him and telling him that I wanted to be an elementary school teacher. And my dad said, "Listen, don't go into don't go into education because there's no money in it. So there's no money in education. Okay? He said the money is in taking care of other people's money. And so it happened to be that I received a full ride scholarship to um, for college to go do accounting. He said that's where the money's at. Take the money. Okay." So I ended up doing that, but my desire, my passion has always been for education. I, I believe in that educational process, and education meaning to draw out what's in someone. Edu to educate means to draw out. A lot of times people think it means to put in, but educate to educate means to draw out. And so my dad, um, you know, telling me that there's no money in education, I found it very interesting because my dad, is he's a pastor of a church, and he has been a pastor for my whole entire life. My grandfather, both my grandfathers are pastors. I have a lot of pastors and ministers all throughout my family. And what they do is educate. And how they make their living is through education. And so this is what they do. But when it came down to me, my dad was telling me there's no money in it. Now, fast forward, you know, probably eight or 10 years later, and I had this vision and dream of education. I had it first, it started off with when I was coming out of school, I was in accounting. Uh, my junior year, I remember sitting in the classroom and and we were going around the room and the, and the instructor, the accounting instructor was asking, the professor was asking us what we were going to do with our degree, what we wanted to do once we got out of school. And so a lot of the people in my class, they were saying, hey, I want to be a, uh, I want to go work for a Fortune 500 company. I want to work for, you know, a big accounting firm. And when she came around to me, she said, Brian, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to open up a chain of 24-hour daycares. And I'd had the business plan written up and everything. And then she asked me, she said, 
she said, why are you here? And when she said it, something clicked to me because that was a great question. Why was I there? And that's not where I wanted to go. Like, I don't want to be in accounting. I despise the thought of doing accounting. I didn't want to be in, the, in an office. To me, accounting meant my life was going to be like boxed up. So I didn't want it. I wanted to change a 24 hour daycare. I had written out this vision, had had this business plan all set up. And so I had written it out. And when she asked me, why am I here? My answer to her was, I don't know. And I got up in that moment and left. Now I left the class and I went to the registrar and started, you know, my counselor and the registrar and all that. And I started to go through the process of changing my major. Now, so it happened, what happened to be that I couldn't change to education because if I would have done so, I would have lost my ability to play, my eligibility to play baseball, which was my primary reason for going to college. My primary reason for going to college was to get drafted and to play professional baseball. That's why I went to college. I just happened to go on an accounting scholarship that paid for me to be there. But my reason for being there was I want to play pro ball. And oh, by the way, I'll, I'll get a degree while I'm here. And so I get up and I leave. And so fast forward 10 years later, that vision that I had for a 24 hour daycare um, had grown. It had, it had grown, I had kept growing it. It was something inside of me that was growing, that I was thinking about, that I was pondering on. And, and I kept writing this vision in this 24 hour daycare. I said, well, if people, if kids come to a 24 hour daycare, I need to grow that because after, after childcare, after preschool, they're going to want to go into first grade and then second grade. And so it began to grow and then it grew into a whole school. And then, so it just kept growing and kept growing. And now I'm, I'm just writing this on a yellow piece a yellow legal pad. I'm writing out this vision. I'm writing it out. And, you know, it was huge. This, the vision was huge. It was like all this square footage and all this stuff. But I didn't have the resources to do that. I didn't have the financial resources to do that. But I kept writing. I kept dreaming. I kept thinking. And then at a different moment, someone came to me and they said, you know, they're in a project. And they said, Brian, don't you have a school you've been working on? And I said, yeah, I do. And he said, Can, would you share it with us? And so I took my stuff and I presented it to them. Next thing I know, they're funding this project. They're funding this vision that I had to, to build a school. All the details of it. I remember going to the bank and sitting in with bankers. And as I'm talking about the vision and what I wanted to do with kids, the bank, the lady that was, you know, part of the bank banking team began to cry. She was crying because she said, I wish my son would have had a chance to go to this kind of school because he struggled so much in school. I wish he would have had an opportunity. And so she's crying. The person that's gonna lend the money, she's crying. And it's so connected to her heart that, you know, she was crying. And so here it is that what started off as just a vision, started off something in the mind, it had the vision had to meet its provision. But before before I ever saw the provision, what was for my vision? I saw the vision. How you doing, man? How you doing, man? How about yourself? I'm doing pretty well. Is it 180? 180? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, sorry about that. I had to pay toll. Thank you. So, what happened was the vision ends up getting funded. Gets funded, you know, and I remember it was over $16 million. No, no problem. Over $16 million. I remember. This is, and this is how this is how vision works. When I was getting ready to leave college, I got invited to do to speak at one of the. Um, at, I mean, after I left college, I got invited to come back to my college and speak. Um, and so I spoke at my college for the young business uh, young business club, right? And so I was there. And at the end of the assembly, they gave me end of the meeting. They gave me a pen and a, a gift. And I remember saying that that pen that they gave me would be the pen um, that I would use to sign my first contract, okay? And it, at this time, I still wanted to play pro ball, still playing ball, because I was actually still in school. So I, was, I wanted to play pro ball, and I said, when I graduate, I'm gonna use this pen to sign my first contract. Fast forward to that meeting, signing the 16, over $16 million. I used that pen to sign that contract. And so vision, as crazy it may seem, if you stick to it, I didn't use that pen for anything else. I said, I'm going to use this pen to sign my first contract. And then I used that pen to sign my first contract, which happened to be for an educational facility, which prior to that, my dad told me there was no money in education. But think about it. 
everything. You look around, there's there's money in anything that you're passionate about, anything that you're willing to dream for. And so when the young lady told me, hey, listen, I want to be in a preschool, I want to be in preschool, but I can't live off of that, what you've done actually is you have cut off your provision. With your words, you've cut off your provision because there's always another way to generate more resources for the person that's passionate. Your passion makes room for you. Your gift, your ability, it makes room for you. And it will bring you before kings. It will bring you before people that will fund stuff that you want to do just because you are passionate about it, just because you're dedicated to it, you're willing to work hard for it, you're willing to push all in, you're willing to sacrifice. And she told me, she said, listen, I can't live off of $11. She said, listen, I'm glamorous. I can't live off of $11. I did that back in high school. And let me tell you, when you're going through your vision, you will not always, when you're pushing towards your vision, you will not always look pretty. You will not always look glamorous. Sometimes there's a trade that needs to happen. You, you, sometimes you have to trade the, the momentary glamour for the greater glory. And so you're right now glamour, you just decide to put it aside. You say, you know what, I'll sacrifice the car, I'll sacrifice the new clothes, I'll sacrifice, I'll put all that aside because what's most important to me is getting to my dream, is getting to my vision. And if you start to put stuff aside, say, you know what, I don't need that. I, I'm, I'm, I am pretty glamorous and I know I could be driving the Benz, but instead I'm going to drive uh, this Nissan, right? And so you start putting it aside and it's okay, you're making a trade. You're making a trade for right now. And it's like that woman who's who's in the delivery room and she's having birthing pains and her body is is like aching and, and cringing and her hair gets messed up and she's sweating. And um, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad this is a blessing to you. You know, when you're that woman's in there and she's delivering a baby, I know there are some women that still look good, but a lot of women don't. Their hair gets messed up, they're sweating, they look bad, they're bad, there's blood everywhere. That is not a glamorous moment. But for the delivery of what's inside of her, she goes through that. And sometimes when it comes down to when you want to deliver what's inside of you, you have to be willing to trade, you have to be willing to look corny, you have to be willing to, to not be in style. Whatever it may mean, you have to be willing for your bank account to take a hit. Because you are you are taking life and making an investment into your future and and so right now you trade it there are things that i could do right now that you know be financially more glamorous but every dollar the money that comes into my life that's seed money that's not play money that's not enjoyable money that's not the money i want to enjoy why because my vision has not been fulfilled so the money that comes in has to go back out it has it's seed and I say, I'll take this dollar and I'll deposit it because I'm going to turn this dollar into a hundred dollars. I'm going to take this hundred dollars and I'm going to deposit it because I'm going to turn this hundred into a thousand and a thousand into 10,000, 10,000 into a million. I'm going to do this because that's what this is for my vision. This is pro vision. And I'm not going to make a decisions. I'm not going to make a decision that is anything against my vision. So here's my vision. This is what I want. I'm going to make four decisions. Pro.